And greetings, garden fans! Welcome to a special episode of a Green Thumbs Garden Tips, presented by the Green Garden Group Protector, Skanderson. Today I'm going to be showing you guys what I frequently refer to in the videos as the Heisenberg DWC uh, Microbial Tea Recipe. So this is a recipe that a lot of you guys have asked me about, and by a lot, I mean like four or five people, which is awesome. And, um... This is really, uh, this works, uh, from what I understand, really well in all hydroponic application. Um, really, uh, it's super duper cost effective. So if you guys are eating shit, paying money for tarantula or piranha, which I think is like, I think it's $6,400 to inoculate 10 plants or so. Um, this is a great alternative. And uh, also, if you guys are interested or having trouble kind of uh, keeping a healthy root system in a water culture, you're having root problems, you're having rot, you're having, you're recovering from a root aphid infestation, um, you tried some new product that uh, was supposed to increase the flavor of your buds and it's super organic and it says okay to run in hydro and it's not okay to run in a highly aerated water culture and you got a, a aerobic bloom and you have all kinds of bacteria, you have root issues, any of that and or you just want to make sure that you don't get that stuff um, and you want to ensure really healthy roots with really low suspension this is a fantastic solution so the Heisenberg recipe basically what you're doing here is you're taking whatever your favorite mycorrhizae uh, inoculant is you're breeding it yourself um, and then you're applying it so typically with your root inoculants they have you put in 10 billion, you know, spores that could produce a huge population. Um, and, you know, some of the stuff is, gets kind of expensive. Others are more reasonable. Um, either way, you can take, like, a fraction, just a tiny little fraction of these and brew it into a tea and basically exponentially increase your bacteria population so that you only use like maybe a tenth of what the manufacturer recommends and um, you just take that and breed your own population and then apply it. So without further ado, too late, here's what the recipe for Heisenberg deep water culture looks like. Start with RO water or distilled, no exceptions, has to be distilled or RO. Um, and then I add in about, this is for two gallons, so um, you know, go from there. So I use a couple of different um, products here, but I use Aqua Shield for liquid compost, um, and uh, you know, any liquid composter works there. And I use uh, about 15 to 30 milliliters of that. I usually use about 30. So 30 milliliters of Aqua Shield. This is obviously a quart, so it's just about a thousand milliliters. And uh, you know, th this is like 12 bucks or something. Um, I don't, really, I don't know because I bought this like maybe a year and a half ago or something and still haven't needed a new one. So I use uh, about 20 mLs of that per two gallons, so 10 mLs per gallon. Um, and then the next thing I add in is a quarter to one half of the scoop or a teaspoon of whatever your favorite mycorrhizae treatment is. So, uh, let me take out the accelerator there. But uh, I've used them all. I've used all these that you see here. Extreme Gardening's um, M drops, their mycos, the ZHO, the Great White, the Organisms, Roots XXL, the General Hydroponics version, um, and a couple others that I've sampled. Um, for me, in deep water, none of them make a difference. They all work all the same for me. I have never said, oh, you know, this one, I switched to Great White, and man, my roots are just exploding so much more than when I brewed the tea with ZHO. Um, so, I mean, you know, this right here, this was $7.95. Again, I bought it at the same time as the Aqua Shield, so like over a year ago. This has um, an ounce in it, <laughs> and you use a quarter scoop, so it has like, I don't know, fuck, probably 300 uh, doses in it. But, um, so feel free. Uh, that's just what my experience is. I know a lot of you guys out there, especially uh, people who are gardening, um, more organic mediums that are um, more expert on developing complex rhizospheres definitely recommend, um, you know, the roots or the, uh, uh, the great white especially. 
But, uh, you know, just in, in water culture, you guys, I haven't found a, a lick of difference. So I use about a quarter to a half teaspoon, add that into the two gallons with the, um, I use 20 mLs of AquaShield, but that's per, again, per two gallons. A quarter to a half a scoop per two gallons. If you want to do a gallon, you do like an eighth of a scoop. <laughs> so you're getting really kind of skinny here. Um, if you like to add like a hormone product, um, an accelerator, this is a, a good one. I, I usually add, if I add this per two gallons, I use half an mL to a quarter mL per two gallons. So uh, same rate as I add in the uh, powders at and um, you, don't, you totally don't have to use it. I think it does probably work a little bit better um, at, uh, for newer, newer plants, vegetative growth. Um, it does tend to, to, in my experience, kind of boost off the, uh, the, the root growth, just as it says. Um, but it's absolutely not necessary to use to get the effect. Um, and I do not use it when I'm treating, um, not in the first two weeks of, I use it the first two weeks of veg and the first two weeks of flour. So that's when I'm adding the root accelerator to the microbial tea. Outside of that, no root accelerator. Um, so, uh, then, then I, I make my little sock here. So this is my tea bag, like most of you are thinking. So I use, uh, nylon, you can use a sock or whatever you have laying around. Obviously, I would have a lot of nylons laying around, and so I use those. And uh, so I just cut them up, and I tie both ends so I can reuse it, like get many tea bags out of one set of nylons. And so I'll cut one end, and then I'll uh, tie the other, and then cut the other. It's a little trick, because I've like cut so many tea bags too small, and nothing worse than a small tea bag. So, um, use that, and then I fill it up with Ancient Forest. I really like this stuff for it, uh, for this particular recipe, but any EWC works, um, so whatever, if you have any earthworm castings laying around, or just want to get some, and can't find the Ancient Forest, that'll completely work, um, just, you know, but I happen to like the Ancient Forest, um, it's, uh, it's good shit, it's, uh, it works really well in this recipe, and I gotta say that, you know, again, this bag I've had since I bought these, and it's like this full, so, um, you know, I'll probably have this for the rest of my life. But I did switch from the EWC, and I do like this just like a, a scotch better. Um, so, you use that, and I use about one cup, and I fill the sock up with it, or the nylon with it. And, uh, so you fill one cup, and then, uh, what you do is you tie it off, and then you affix it to an air stone. So I have this like green little wire thing here, and I've affixed my tea bag full of ancient forest to an air stone to ensure I get super good aeration. Okay, and then so I'll, I'll uh, then the last thing I add just for food and to wake them up the bacteria up is um, some organic um, blackstrap molasses, unsulfured. Um, so I get this kind, this is a pretty high grade extraction process, it's uh, totally organic obviously, and uh, I use one tablespoon per two gallons. So um, what I, I think one time I broke it down, oh and then I, so you use one tablespoon per two gallons, you add it all into a um, high tech EWC slash microbial tea brewer. These are very, very sophisticated pieces of equipment. They only sell them at Home Depot and Lowe's and any other uh, home improvement store and online and um, sometimes at grocery stores and at pharmacies, but that's it. And then uh, I add it all into there and then I just take, I have uh, like only super large air pumps, but you don't need something this big. Even an aquarium air pump that you can get at Walmart for eight bucks will work, no problem. Um, you do want to have a couple of air stones though. The more oxygen, the better. And so um, you just uh, this is one. Uh, this is your tea bag air stone, and then in addition to that, I like to add in two other air stones. So I dump it all in there. I add in the molasses last. I go ahead and turn the pump on. It's going to bubble and froth, and as your uh, bacteria becomes awake and uh, you start to brew a, a population, you'll get a bunch of foam. That's good. That indicates biological activity. 
Uh, I think it reach, reaches peak bioavailability in about 48 hours, so I brew it for 48 hours, which means I just let it sit in there uh, pumping air for 48 hours, and then I treat it. I treat uh, that then the tea is ready. So the application rate for the tea, it, for regular maintenance, for standard, like what I run all the time, is one cup of tea per 10 gallons in deep water. One cup per 10 gallons with every res change, assuming you're changing every seven days, and if you're in water culture, you better be. Um, and sometimes after three days, in the first, especially in the first two weeks, two or three weeks of edge, two to three weeks of flower, I will add in an additional half cup um, around, evenly broken down amongst however many plants I have running on the root crown. So right around the crown of the deep water, whatever you're suspending it in, your net pot or whatever, I dress half a cup to kind of, you know, revitalize the population. Because you really can't keep a live, active population in an inert, non-organic medium. So you're basically continuing to replenish it, continuing to replenish it, continuing to replenish it. So that's the application rate for standard use. In the event that you have uh, some sort of infestation, um, you're recovering from root burn, from uh, bug infestation, etc. I, I generally, in that type, under those circumstances, I recommend using uh, one cup per five gallons. So you basically double dose, or uh, excuse me, two cups per five gallons. And uh, the uh, you always want to dress all of that throughout the root crown. So you know, if you're not doing maintenance, if you're doing it because you have damage or something like that. Um, then you want to increase the dose and you want to apply it directly to the root crown. Uh, and you definitely want to stay, if you do it like that, you want to stay on top of the replenishment and you need to stay on top of um, changing out your res. So you need to change your res maybe even every five days when you're in a recovery process because there is, it's very light suspension, it runs very, very clean, but... Um, it, you are brewing with like Alaskan Hema, so um, you're gonna you're gonna have some suspension, some particular matter in there, and it's important that you're changing that out so that you avoid um, working backwards. But uh, hope that's helpful for you guys. So that so yeah, you want to keep it in the fridge. It lasts about seven to ten days. You can tell when it turns because it starts smelling funky. So it can smell like mossy, um, like earthy, but it should not smell shitty. If it's smelling shitty. It's got anaerobic, and it's no good. So keep it in the fridge. It stays good for a while. That's two gallons, and gosh, you guys, that is like, I think it costs like a dollar. I once worked it out. It was less than two bucks for that mixture, and uh, so the application rate was like 25 cents or something. It's something crazy, crazy cheap. Uh, and more importantly than that, <laughs> anyone who's watched my channel knows that uh, I'm always into budget stuff, but uh, if I can get something that's going to work better, I will pay for it. I haven't found that anything, absolutely nothing, that works better for inoculating roots in water culture um, than this recipe. Everything else I've worked with, some of it's worked, uh, but the best that I've gotten to is working with higher maintenance. So in other words, like, you can use it, but you got to change your res every five days, and you got to, you know, use it in these particular advanced dosages, like you can only add a little bit at a time, and you got to mix it up first, and then apply it as a solution, not directly into the res as indicated, otherwise you get, like, you know, you get problems in your, with your roots, so... I hope that's helpful. That's the Heisenberg DWC Water Culture Microbial Tea Recipe. And I hope you've enjoyed learning how to brew your own deep water culture tea. This has been Dr. Skanderson bringing you another episode of Tea Brewing with Passion. Thanks for stopping by.